Hey, Hack Day. Back from beautiful Thai Garden in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about Pulse programs today on the Pi PPM. Oh, grab a chair, man. You're, you're going to want one. When we're talking about Pulse programs. The important thing here is to talk about what a DC field does. So a DC magnetic field takes our polarization, our magnetic polarization, and it transitions it, it polarizes it along a new axis. So we're reorients the field. But an AC pulse is going to take that magnetization and rotate it in a new direction. So AC fields rotate magnetization. So we could take something and rotate it down on a new axis. We can rotate any which way we want. Okay. So if we go back then to the original pulse program, we have a hard transition on, where we're turning polarization on, a delay, and a hard off, where we turn polarization off, and then we acquire the data. Now, <clears throat> what if we wanted to do AC pulses? Now we have a situation where we have to add an AC pulse somewhere in here or change up the way that we're doing this experiment. So the answer to do this flexibly is called pulse programming. Okay. The pulse program are just sequences of instructions and they're executed on the fly by the Pi PPM. <clears throat> At the end of the day, we want to acquire data, but before that, maybe we'll add an AC pulse. We can extend this as much as we want flexibly on the Pi PPM by simply adding more and more instructions. So this would be an example of a pulse program using the new scheme that Pi PPM implements, where we can flexibly arrange these in sequence and run a new kind of experiment where <coughs> we have multiple acquisitions, multiple pulses, delays, etc. And this is a much more flexible way of going about taking data from the IPPM. Instead of having a hard-coded pulse program, you can now ask any question you want. So this is an inherently different question that we're asking our spins in the sample than the original hard-coded sequence. With pulse programming, you can ask an infinite number of questions. That's the whole idea. So, pulse programs then, in Python, look like lists of lists. So we have an outer list here, and inside the list, every element is its own list. It has an instruction, so we could delay, we could acquire, we could have a pulse, and then we just give each one of these instructions different arguments. And so, delays take arguments in seconds, so this would be a one second delay. This is the number of samples, so we're taking 16k points, and 20 is the sample rate in kilo samples per second. So each one of these has a different syntax, and what we do is we write this to the device in Python, and then it's as easy as <coughs> dev.execute. The PyPPM runs our statements here, it compiles these into a bytecode instruction set executes it, and then gives you back the data as your traditional list of, or tuple of tuples. So a few questions. Sure. Um, how does that actually apply to protons, for instance, or spin? So we can ask different questions in the sample now than we could before with the hard-coded scheme. For example, we can ask about relaxation rates. So all these protons have what's called a T1 and a T2 relaxation rate, and those are intrinsic to the sample. It's used a lot in MRI to get different weighting on images. 
we can ask these questions with pulse programming in a flexible way that the original scheme wouldn't allow us to do. Furthermore, there are more features, and so being able to arrange these in the right way at the right time really necessitates going to this more complex language. In the end, though, for the Python user, it's going to be as simple as writing lists.